Studios of Key West is hosting another fantastic artist in residence who just so happens to be my next guest this morning. Paula Wyman is a fiction writer living in the D.C. area. Paula, thank you so much for being with me this morning. Thank you for having me, Jenna. Paula, I mentioned that you are living in the D.C. area right now. That's where you were born and raised. Your parents were born, and actually your first book was set in the D.C. area. Yes, my first book is called Threat Potential, and the reason I wanted to set a book in D.C. is because I wanted to write something that wasn't focused on politics. Most of the books that you read about Washington, D.C. are focused on politics, and there's a large population of people living in Washington who have lived there a long time who have nothing to do with politics, and their lives are affected by the government, just as everyone's, but they're, they're not specifically and directly involved in the government, and I thought those people should have a voice. Mm -hmm. Are you one of those people, Paula, who hasn't <laughs> had anything to do with I the am. government? The book isn't <laughs> about me, <laughs> but um, one of the great things about writing fiction is that you can slip into other people's lives and experience mm -hmm. them without actually having to, to live those lives. Right. And um, these stories are linked in that they all are set in Washington, D.C., and they take place from about 1980 into the future. Mm -hmm. it, the book ends in about 2025 and the main character narrates every story from about age 15 until age 60. Mm -hmm. um, so while a lot of cultural and historical changes are going on in Washington, um, class tensions, racial tensions, um, in the larger world there's the Gulf War, there was the DC sniper attacks in 2002, a year after 9-11. Mm -hmm. All of these things are going on. The external pressures on the characters are, are grouped with the internal pressures that they face, the personal problems, the traumas like unplanned pregnancies, drug abuse, tragic deaths, troubled marriage, mm -hmm. the problems of aging. Um, no, hopefully no one has, no one person has to face all of those problems, no, but, but everyone faces some of those problems in, at some point, mm -hmm. and that's what I wanted to explore. Well, great. Well, before we talk more about threat potential, I am going to have you read our viewers this morning a little insert from the book. I want to know, though, about your time in Key West. This is your second time here this year, and you kind of get to experience the island a little bit more this time around. Yes, I've had a really good chance to talk to people this time. The first time I was here was the Key West Literary Seminar, and that was a wonderful experience. Um, and it, it made me want to come back and apply to be an artist in residence at the studios of Key West. And now um, I've had a chance to talk to people similar to Washington. Lots of people come here from elsewhere now for different reasons. In Washington, they're coming usually for professional opportunities. Um, but it was really interesting to me to talk to different people and hear their stories about how they came to be here and what their lives are like. And I am kind of nosy. <laughs> That's <laughs> I go, okay. I go around <laughs> asking people questions and, mm -hmm. and they seem to want to talk about mm -hmm. it. And I find it so fascinating that there's such a great mix of people here and everyone is not only welcome, but sort of the differences are celebrated. Mm -hmm. And whereas I, I was actually just saying to someone today that at home, if you say you're an artist or a writer, it's, a little, it's still a little bit unusual. You're a little bit of a novelty act. Mm -hmm. um, but, but here, everybody's doing something different. In fact, most people are doing two or three different things and mm -hmm. many of them are artists. And it's, um, it's all celebrated. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a wonderful thing. I mean, it's, it's hard to live here. I think it's hard to live here. So people have to really want to. Mm -hmm. They have to work hard. Um, but there are, other, there are other kinds of compensation that come from being in a place like this, and I think it's pretty unique. It's very, very unique, very diverse, and, and it is a wonderful place to live. Now, Paula, what did you want to accomplish this trip to Key West, and did you accomplish it? Well, for, first of all, I have a long list of story ideas inspired by some of the um, things I've seen and people I've talked to here. And so that's for the future. Mm -hmm. And I've also started work on a novel. Mm -hmm. And I'm finishing up my story collection. I'm finishing up some revisions. Okay. And I've accomplished all of that and had time to, to see some of the fabulous sites around town and mm -hmm. experience 
fantasy fest. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that that was an experience for it was, you. It was different. <laughs> we don't have that kind of thing in Washington. No. <laughs> I'm sure you don't. I mean, the politicians maybe, but the door is usually closed. Right. <laughs> Behind closed doors, yeah. fantasy fest happens. All right, Paula, well, before we go this morning, could you read a little bit from your book, Threat sure. Potential? Sure. Um, this, this excerpt is from a story called Dubrovnik 1989. Uh, just to set it up and give you a context, it's actually set in Washington, D.C. in 1989, which is the height of the crack epidemic in Washington and also around the time that Washington was nicknamed the murder capital. Um, there were about 500 murders or close to 500 murders in 1989 and 13 shootings in one day, Valentine's Day. So to give you the context for this mm -hmm. scene, which takes place later in the story, <clears throat> Spencer directed me, but I couldn't believe, didn't believe, he lived in that neighborhood. Are we lost, I said? This looks bad, I said. I drove past tight row houses with boarded up windows, and on the sidewalk, every block or so, there'd be a young guy in a knit hat leaning against a burned out streetlight watching us. I felt like the car was moving in slow motion. It was 2.30 in the morning. Pull over, said, said Spencer. I don't think that's a good idea, I said. I had no idea where I was. The street sign was missing. There was nothing but a pole. I was off the map. Pull over, he ordered me through clenched teeth. I pulled up to the curb, engine running, at an hour when decent people are home in bed, and a man I'd never seen before, a black man too skinny for his clothing, leaned through the window that Spencer had opened and said, two rock for 20. Spencer said something and the guy jumped into the back seat of my car. Drive, said Spencer. No, I said. Are you effing kidding me, said Spencer? Drive around the block now. So I drove around the block. Pull over, he said. I did. The dealer got out. Spencer told me to drive again. Where, I said, I have no idea where we are. Just go forward, said Spencer. He pushed in my car's cigarette later. Why is this taking so goddamn long, he said. It takes that long, I said. How do I get to your house? I knew he didn't live in that neighborhood. He didn't answer right away. When the lighter was hot, he took it out, put one of his rocks on it, and smoked it through an empty cardboard tube he must have kept in his jacket pocket. Spencer's crew cut was so blonde you could see his pink scalp turning pinker the more he smoked. The stubble on his chin was so pale, it almost wasn't there. He was the whitest white boy I'd ever seen. I didn't know white boys like him smoke crack. I'd never seen anyone smoke crack before. Too many firsts for one night. Please tell me how to get to your house, I said. I was afraid I was going to cry. I didn't want Spencer to see that. Shut up, he said. You're making too much noise. Shut up. His voice was full of menace. I was silent, but the tears were going down my face. There wasn't anything I could do about that, so I drove, with the smell of burning plastic, of vinyl, seat melt, of stripped inhibitions, of weak will. Paula, I want to read the rest of the book right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. You can just check out Paula's website for updates on when Threat Potential will be released. Paula, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. I hope that the next time you're in Key West, you can join me again. I would love that. <laughs> All right. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be right back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and again at 8.30 a.m. Take care. If I